Hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I'm here to discuss bookish things with you. I know it's been a hot minute since I've made a new video. I have missed you all and I hope you're all doing super good. Now I could give you a bunch of reasons about how busy I've been, but the truth is winter is always a bit tough on my energy levels and uh, making these posts required more energy than I had to give. But here we are back in spring and the sun is shining and my spirits have rebounded. So the good news is that reading is something that gives me energy and I'm already 47 books into my 2023 goal of 100. And I'm gonna tell you all about them. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to try to tell you about all of them in this one post. Um, I'm gonna break them up into monthly reading wraps so you don't fall asleep on me. All right, let's go. So in the month of January, I read nine books. So first up was The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I was pretty heavily entrenched in these twisty, turny murder mysteries at the time, and people were raving about Lucy Foley. Um, I read The Paris Apartment by Foley in December, and I wanted to give her another go. So at the time I read this, I rated this at four stars, but I haven't felt the need to read another of her books since then. So uh, anyway, this book is set um, on an island off the coast of the UK where a wealthy socialite is having her Instagram-worthy wedding at a remote castle with all of her family and friends. But then they start dying. So without going into anything spoilery, because you know that's not my thing, here are what I thought were the pros and cons. I like Foley's writing style. She weaves a really good story. I didn't know who the killer was. Um, I did have suspicions that weren't far off, and I didn't get that sense of being completely blown away. Um, I also feel like her stories are overly complicated. I think she goes into that Agatha Christie vein a little bit, where you have 100 people in a room with one dead guy, and any one of them could be the killer. So, too complicated for me. Thinking back on it though, I rated this at four stars at the time. I kind of want to bump it down to three now. So, you know, we'll see. Next up is I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney. Look, I am an Alice Feeney groupie. Love her, want to be friends with her. Follow her on all the socials. This, uh, this one is about a semi-famous actress who comes home one day to find that her husband is missing. Amy's past is extremely twisted up and convoluted and it's finally starting to catch up to her. Um, as usual with Alice Feeney, I was shocked. However, I will say of all of her books, this is the one that gave me the most heebie-jeebies. It was creepy and ick, so I've warned you. But I can almost guarantee you, you'll be shocked. Four stars. My third read of the new year was The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a YA mystery that surrounds a 16-year-old girl named Avery who, out of the blue, finds out that she is the sole heir and beneficiary of a 40-something billion dollar estate. But she did not know the billionaire uh, that died and left her everything. So why did Avery inherit this? The only real requirement of her inheritance is that she moves into the mansion with the recently disinherited family, who are all, of course, thrilled to have her there. This is the first book in a three book series and honestly I loved it. Great twists and turns and a really quick and easy read too. So this one was a five star for me. My next read was the most recent book from my beloved Alice Feeney. She does have another one coming up at the end of the year called Daisy Darker. Um, I listened to this as an audiobook and I really loved the reader's voice. There are also a lot of riddles and rhymes in the book and I felt like hearing them um, spoken really added to the story. So this is a story of a young woman, Daisy Darker, who has gone to a mini reunion at her grandmother's uh, cottage, funny enough, also set on an isolated island off the coast of the UK to celebrate her grandmother's 80th birthday. Now, grandma had a fortune told some years ago that she wouldn't live past her 80th birthday. And sure enough, at midnight, Grandma is found dead. So this is another that feels a little Agatha Christie. You have to have a house, you have a house full of people and a dead person. Who done it? This does give me some vibes from another very well-known story, but I feel like if I told you what that story is, I'd be revealing too much. 
So you're just going to have to read it. Um, and as usual, where Feeney is concerned, I didn't see it coming. So another one, five stars. Ah, so now we're going to come to a bit of a change of pace. So my friend Tia, also a big reader, but definitely more into the romance genre, recommended an author to me by the pen name of Christina Lauren. I call this a pen name because it turns out it's two authors, one named Christina and one named Lauren. And I kind of love that they write together. Um, I gave her first recommendation to me, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, um, a whirl in January, and it was a lot of fun. No one is murdered, no great mystery here, and you can probably guess where the story is going before you even crack the book. <laughs> but really, is that so bad? I always think there's a reason uh, that Hallmark movies are so popular. Sometimes life is tough and you just need a fluffy love story to get you through. So if that's your thing, Christina Lauren is probably for you. Four fluffy stars from me. Okay, so keeping in the love story genre, I know I'm late to jump on the Colleen Hoover train, and to be honest, this is just not the type of thing I normally gravitate toward. But I'd heard so much about this, um, and now they're getting ready to make this book into a movie, so what the heck, I went for it. My next January read was Colleen Hoover's It Ends With Us. Her sequel to this, It Starts With Us, yes, It Ends With Us is first, It Starts With Us is second, uh, just came out in late 2022. So when I was reading this, there was a lot of buzz about this series. The book follows Lily as she's sorting her life out in Boston, and she falls in love with a charming, wealthy doctor named Ryle. Shortly before they're married, she runs into her high school, uh, high school sweetheart, Atlas. Um, I'm going to pause here uh, and say that Hoover likes weird names. Um, I'm also going to warn you, this book is pretty heavy in domestic violence. So while this is going to sound like a fluffy romance, it is nowhere near as fluffy as something you're going to read by Christina Lauren. This is a tough story, uh, but I think she depicts the slippery slope of violence, of domestic violence, as well as how hard it can be for women to escape. Many never do. Um, as my first coho read, though, I really wasn't sure what to expect from her, uh, but I was not disappointed. Four stars from me. My last three January reads are all uh, author repeats. First up, Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Damn, read this one. So you kind of start out in the present tense. Amber awakens in a hospital. She's in a coma. She's frozen. She can't see, speak, or move, but she can hear. And we, the reader, can hear her thoughts. So we alternate between that state, flashbacks to the accident that landed her in the hospital, and a series of diary entries from childhood 20 years earlier. The tagline of this book is, I'm in a coma, my husband doesn't love me anymore, and sometimes I lie. I was absolutely on the edge of my seat through this, and again, didn't see it coming. <laughs> How does Alice Feeney do this? Five stars. All right, next up was The Unhoneymooners, also by Christina Lauren. Um, I had to go back and read the synopsis to remember what this was even about. It was cute, but the whole conflict in this was so annoying to me because it was something that could have just been so easily avoided. Um, I did give this four stars at the time, but I'm really not sure why I did. It was okay. Um, I probably really need to rethink my rating system. Um, I think I should sit on these for 24 to 48 hours from now on before I rate. This is really more of a three and that's probably being nice. All right, next up is another Colleen Hoover book called Layla. I have really gone back and forth about this book, deciding if I liked it or not. The thing is, I really liked the writing. I mostly liked the characters, and it was interesting, but I hated the premise. So the basic plot is that our main character is a dude called Leeds, again with uh, Colleen Hoover's weird naming, and he is a famous musician, and he has a stalker who shows up one day at his home, and shoots his girlfriend, Layla, in the head. Layla does survive her wound, but she's dramatically altered. In an effort to recapture the earlier magic of their relationship, he takes her to a bed and breakfast where they had originally met and began their love affair. So while they're there, though, he meets and falls in love with a ghost who hangs out in the B&B. &B. So there's that. I don't know, paranormal is not my thing, and I kind of think it's hokey. But if you're good with that, then you should definitely read this. 
I'm going to go with three and a half stars. Um, and there you have it. That's January, 2023. So if you're looking for something exciting, thrillery, I'd go with Sometimes I Lie or Daisy Darker. If you want a fluffy romance, I'd go with Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. And for everyone else, read The Inheritance Games. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and what you think. What's the best book you've read so far this year? If you haven't already and you've hung out with me this long, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, have fun, be safe, and don't murder anyone. Bye!